Hello. Hello, hello. Let me see. Is this. Does my mic sound okay or do I sound like I'm coming through a laptop? Okay, who are we gonna watch? Well, there's probably only one place to start. Right, yeah, the issue is my mic, basically, my USB mic is kind of. Seems like the input is screwed on it, so. Hopefully, I just don't touch it because if I touch the cable, I'm gonna probably. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> come through the webcam mic, basically. Um. Hello everyone, Thomas, Hakan, Richard, Alistair, Caucasus, David, good morning. Not, not morning here, but but yes. Okay, let's watch this series. Some of you may know what series I'm going to go for. You can maybe guess. Roll call, yeah. I really don't want to touch that cable. Is this the fight? <laughs> What's up, Todd? Pricey boy, face cam indeed. Nexus of reality. Denji the Chainsaw. I don't know where he got this name from. It's Esperanto. I suppose he put on some music. What's that like for you guys? Alright. So, is anyone watching lots? Anyone? I've been following this tournament more than the soccer World Cup. Nice. Yeah, me too. Okay, so we got Nexus. He's on Badlands. Uh, this is game one of. Let me get the challenge up here real quick. I can. So, Admiral, where can you watch it? Uh, you can watch it on Twitch. Yeah, let me first slow this down because I don't want to miss things. Let me get the challenge. There we go, Legend of the Stars, and place to watch the tournament where it was casted is here where it was casted live I'm so worried about the mic but anyway kind of nice it wasn't a tag at a Nexus final but meant it was a bit of yeah yeah well you know spoilers um But, uh, yeah, I agree with what you said. Okay, Nexus goes, grabs some rocks with the ACU, doesn't send. Usually, players will send an, an in, one of the first, maybe the third engineer, second or third engineer will go and grab rocks. Nexus doing something different here. He's got a new build. So he's only going to make two P-Gens. Initially, rush both hydrocarbons really fast. Third air, no engineer to the rocks either. Okay, all right, that's a way. And this is kind of like 
what Nexus normally does or has done in the past on Badlands which is yeah still two P gens but then you go Hydro you don't make the second Hydro immediately you just build a lot of factories right here and we also here's the engineer that is reclaiming the rocks Um, that's pretty arbitrary, Alistair, I would say. Uh, why not make the Hydro immediately? Because normally you will overflow energy. So like right now, for example, he doesn't have the hydrocarbon, I mean, he doesn't have mass, he doesn't need more power immediately. So you would actually, you'll often see players build the second Hydro and overflow power which means you built it too soon basically so unless you have it worked out the way Nexus does to only have two P gens then you're gonna overflow if you have more than a couple of P gens well it looks like so far Nexus build is stronger here comes a bomber coming in at the hydro takes out an NG I think in Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever there is quite often there's like if there's two or three ways to get a similarly efficient opening there's not always like a one best way there's different builds that achieve different things builds that counter each other so in this case I mean, it kind of looks like Nexus is better, but now he's he hasn't built any power in since he built that second Hydro, so... Okay, he's going to build this. That's going to help. He's really... I like it, though. That's interesting. He's really... Fo he's. It's like a no p -gen build. He has two, still just the two first Tech, two p tech 1 p -gens he had. And then the rest of his power comes from the Hydrocarbons, which is... And Hydrocarbons are way more efficient, so... He's uh, doing nicely there. Good defense by Esperanto. Mantis in a really good formation to defend his uh, his expansion here. Now probably should take. He should turn with the ACU here and deny the Thams getting past. But uh, wasn't paying attention to that at the moment at that time. Good defense from Nexus. Oh, his unit stopped firing there for a second. I don't know why that happened. That was weird. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, good defense, very good trade there. Mass deposit on his side of the map. Thams get through, need to keep running. It could have been caught there, but now it's one Tham in the back being chased by five Mantis. And, yeah, does the Tham doesn't have to do anything, really. It's already achieved a lot. Hello, hello. Uh, I got distracted by some of your suggestions. No, when I was playing, I wasn't reading chat at all, so that's not the case. Uh, no, no need to apologize, but I do appreciate it. What got killed here? Still no hydro for Esperanto. See, he's he's not got two of them. What's up, Esperanto? Uh, you can't really watch it. Uh, I'm not lagging on my end, so it's, it's probably your end, I guess. Like, I don't have dropped frames. Maybe someone else can confirm. Okay, SP trying to get a run by it. This is not... It doesn't look like it's going to work here. Thams are... Defending well. And that's uh, another another failed attack for SP. That's a pretty nasty one, kind of throwing tanks away. And meanwhile, Nexus has actually gotten through. Killed a few mechs here. Almost killed a mechs here. And uh, then gets cleaned up. So he doesn't get to continue running through the back, but 
You can see our whole army is, is now out of position big time. On the side, Esperanto getting the left and fighting for the right as well. It's not lagging. Okay, good. Oh. Esperanto really likes his shift G, so does Nexus. And it is quite uh, effective once there's no AoE around. Nexus f somehow finding a way through with another small attack. Most of these attacks really are just annoyances though. He's not managing to kill a mex in this scenario. Just damaging some and kind of depositing mass but still pushing and actually finds finds damage on this side instead so certain attacks are doing damage others are not doing damage but maybe allowing as you can see I mean the one attack allowed this attack to go through so this is quite painful damage I mean there's two four six eight ten mass per second he's down now for however long it takes him to to replace those mexes and you know yeah there's a bit of mass there but it's not easy to to grab a lot of that mass requires engineers tech 2 land is up just finished for Esperanto and just about to finish for Nexus any mexes we got one about to finish here two about to finish second one is slightly behind and I see two mexes upgrading for Esperanto but they're only just upgrading more times getting through I mean it's kind of crazy how you really don't expect to see run bys get this kind of damage like Nexus is finding so many gaps and I don't even know where these units are coming from like where did those units come from maybe maybe the ACU was over here and they came through this way I'm not sure Nexus marches forward slowly on the left no reason not to. I mean, he's got units in support. And the ACU is going to be pretty safe. What's a Pranav? Just constantly, both players trying to find good trades, trying to find ways through the gaps. I mean, Nexus has no gaps to find. Uh, the only way through is drops, really, which, I mean, drops are very commonly seen on Badlands. Quite commonly seen because the terrain really blocks the frontal attacks generally but uh, somehow Nexus found his way through many many occasions more engineers needed for Esperanto really he needs a lot more engineers to, to grab reclaim engineers going down around the oh around the HQ which is building a beetle or two or three we'll see how many he makes and next is just T2. T2 is Nexus plan. One, two, three, four factories upgrading at once to Tech 2. The beauty of this is that he's just going to have Ilshavo. He's going to have four Ilshavo appear at the same time. Which is pretty nice to have your army just come out in waves rather than like a single unit coming out it's kind of nice it can leave you with like a it can even endanger say if units are dropped here and then these factories are only just started building units that could be nasty you're not going to have any units come out of the factory self-defend but that's maybe a small use case this is a big attack that nexus is is making on the left now and it's a bit crazy to me that he can make this attack I mean it just really shows how far ahead he is that he can make this attack while he's only just finished his tech 2 production upgrades and so those factories haven't been making any units and still he can just break through and there's a bit of a positioning error as well from Esperanto he didn't cover the side doesn't have walls or a PD here either as you can see Nexus has PD uh, no walls though but actually multiple PDs as this is this is where the gap would normally be found um, so many units in the back so many uh, looks looks like looks like a, a 
very convincing win for, for Nexus here. Esperanto finishing a gun. Yes, gun is finished just in time. He should be able to... Yeah, I don't think he'll be dying to this army of Thams anyway. But that may just delay the inevitable. The entire back of the base will die. It looks like the right side will die as well. There's a, Zooey's out to kill the, the PDs and there's enough Thams, I think, to break through. Plus the Thams are going to come around here and maybe help out if they don't all die to bombers by that point. Left side completely dead. And I imagine there's quite a lot of Ilshavo pumping out now. Yeah, we're up to 13 Ilshavo. He's actually got <laughs> he's got so much T2 production. Yeah, there's no Tech 3 on the way. Tech 2 air, Tech 2 land, and finish the game shortly is, is the plan here for Nexus. ACU heading all the way home. Might be worth queuing up a Tech 2 upgrade. Some f factories being recycled here as well. For extra mass, he has he is spending mo a lot more mass than he actually is bringing in. So, Tech 3 is finished for Esperanto. Still making some Tech 2 out of his uh, Tech 2 land factories. I think that's, that's going to be absolutely necessary to hold on just a bit longer. But uh, yeah, as you can see now, the left side dead, even more units in the back, and only two bombers coming after them to try and defeat them. It's going to take them a while. Gun ACU, overcharging Nilshavo, doesn't have enough in storage to get the kill initially, but finishes them off after. Tries to retake the left side, or the right side as fast as he can, but... Well... Oh! The Hydra survives. What a victory there. <laughs> Air win for Nexus. And the Nautas are coming in. And the actually the uh, T2 Pigeon is already down. He's now bombing the Tech 3 HQ. And I think he he will eventually be successful in taking that out. El Chavo coming towards the ACU. And the El ACU very unlikely to have many overcharges in, it, in him without a Tech 2 Pigeon to support. I'm not seeing any, and like I think the Ilshvo could probably just come around the these little hills and click on him, and that would be the end of it because he has no way to kill them in time. But next is just running into the base, uh, which is maybe not the best thing to do. But I mean, the game is completely over. Tech three HQ is dead. BG says Esperanto not happy with how he played here, I assume. I mean, the amount of raids that got through was quite astonishing. I think Nexus is very Nexus is very good on this map for sure. Um, but uh, I think Esperanto made some pretty bad attacks early on. We definitely saw this maybe 10 12 units here get wiped out and then he, he he yeah he had some bad trades and then there were gaps and nexus actually found gaps he's through here through here massive breakthrough on the left side eventually um so and yeah maybe the maybe the hydros i mean they are way more efficient uh, just just so people know plus 100 power 160 mass, 800 energy. One tech, tech one pigeon, 20 power. Five times less, and it is set at 160 mass. It's 75 mass. Energy cost 800 for hydro, 750 for a pigeon. So as you can see, hydrocarbon way more efficient, several times more efficient. So that makes a big difference in the early game. That's for sure. Um, so maybe this build that Nexus does will become the standard on Badlands. I wouldn't be that surprised, honestly, because it also eliminates this early engineer taking the mass, which is a very um, which is it's easy to attack that that engine with an early lab or something and screw up your opponent. So 
it seems pretty good. Um, what minute? I'm not sure. It was very quick. He basically got these two at the same time. Uh, the AC was over here building this one. So whatever timing that is. Pretty fucking fast. And uh, at that point he still just had these two P-Gens. So pretty sick. Um, yeah, so it seems like it's probably more efficient and also eliminates a small weak, uh, weakness in in the other normal builds. So a nice improvement. Let's watch the next game. Good evening. Okay. The ditch. Some split screen action needed here. All right, so the ditch um I am going to very briefly look The rules to see who actually picked what map so let me see okay I need to go to the group stage Let's just slow this down for a second Hall of Fame matches I can refer you to um well there's a, I have casted the a lot of a lot of games <laughs> a lot of games you could just check my most popular uploads there's some there's some good games in there um High seed picks map one, low seed pick, picks map two. So that means that Esperanto picked this map. And uh, Nexus picked Badlands. So Nexus picking Badlands. Not unheard of. Esperanto picking the ditch is a very weird pick, in my opinion. Um, because Nexus is extremely good here. He's play the way he plays this map is basically just he's the biggest eco whore on this map um of anyone that plays the map extremely quick to get a lot of mexes up like if you think of the other good players on the ditch i would say like petrick you know blackheart um Paralon. Uh, of all of them, obviously Paralon has a, by far the most aggressive style. And uh, Nexus is the opposite end. Just uh, insane Igor. Yudi I haven't seen play the ditch that I can actually remember. Um... You know, it's a game, it's not a map that people get to play very often. Mo like, probably most people have never, well, definitely most people have never even played the map in 1v1, so. So, yeah. Yeah, Nexus is definitely insane on this map. Oh my god. Okay. There we go. Now we can see the map. Alright, so they both have their transport at the same time, but Nexus is one factory ahead. And uh, Esperanto's left his NGs in the base. Come on, go, go, go. Bit of idle transport time unnecessarily. 
means the Nexus is now expanding slightly faster. So already looks good for Nexus. He's got like one pigeon more than his opponent, maybe two pigeons more. He's building the Hydro with two NGs, so he'll get that before... Uh, oh no, Esperanto has two NGs, they're just right on top of each other. Yeah, so... Slight advantage to Nexus here. Upgrading Mexes already. I love it. This is what I like. Building mechs is just because you need to upgrade mechs, not because you want the mass from the mechs. <laughs> just because you you need to spend mass and you want to upgrade mechs as fast as possible. So, well, time to build my mass extractors now. Then, so I can upgrade them. Tech two. Tech two air being assisted. Like, let's look at his eco right now. I really do find it shocking how he has the power to upgrade tech 2 power tech 2 sorry tech 2 air with assistance while ecoing he also has has he built a second yeah he's built a second transport dropped here 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 no attacks whatsoever where are the bombers like if i'm if i was playing nexus there's no way I'm, like i don't know you have to have a strategy to throw him off and deal some damage I'm not sure what Esperanto is uh, what's what was his plan coming into this game because he did pick the map so you would assume the guy who picks the map has a strategy when he's picking into one of his opponents biggest strengths so this is nice it's quite late to be doing damage I mean Nothing on the top side. There's also no no scouting here, so Nexus could have dropped here. So we might see uh, a radar get thrown up. Yeah, immediate radar. Nothing spotted. Um, yeah, the bombers are great over here. Nexus is <laughs> so poorly defended because he's absolutely greedy. Um, now imagine there was a transport that was dropping here to actually make a proxy in this position and uh, do some damage proxy maybe a proxy closer to reclaim it's like this area has no reclaim um but yeah where's the transport or maybe tech 2 land should be finished already so that riptides can move across something like you you can tech so quickly on this map um and people don't, people, like Nexus is abusing the tech to get tech to power extremely fast. Like if we look at how much pigeons, how many pigeons he made, 52, which is a huge amount on any other map. Double that for, double that for um, Esperanto, tech to pigeons, way more efficient than tech one. So that's an advantage Nexus has. So that's where Nexus abuses the, the ability to, put resources into tech upgrades really fast is he does it for eco basically tech two mexes tech two power but um you know you could be well you could certainly have tech two land finish by now be up have upgraded some factories or have them on the way to upgrading and you could even be about to start tech three so and then you can really do some insane damage but uh, Esperanto is playing extremely normal, very standard. Oh, ooh, ooh, this isn't standard though. An NG drops to the corner. He's upgrading a uh, factory. He's actually upgrading an HQ, even though he has an HQ. So that's a bit sad. He could just have a support factory here. It would be a lot cheaper. I can tell it's just by the drain there, minus 7, minus 156. Yeah, SP's doing good to slow this down, but um, 
is that really hurting Nexus? He has plenty of mass. Um, he has no issues on the top side. You can see probably Tech 3 Mexes are... I assume... Yeah, no, he's actually started his Tech 3 Mexes already. Four Tech 3 Mexes building right now. <laughs> Four already upgrading. Tech 3 land just started pretty quick, pretty quick. Now, is he making any Tech 2? Like, this would be a good place. You could really continue the pressure here if you get a good few factories to Tech 2 here and make the Riptides. No drop in the corner. Definitely needs to take this this stuff back. Alright, well, not take it back. Take it. Uh, in any regard. Top side. What's going on? Just, like, Tech 1 land spam to hopefully defend against... Nexus very low impact incursions here. I mean, he's not really investing much, but it's enough to just be annoying. Give your your opponent something to worry about. And now here's the real Here's more more damage being possible here. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tech two factories gonna spam out Wagners. And they're gonna be really annoying going under the water so they can't be seen by radar. And Tech 3 land also almost complete. These four mexes now going to Tech 3. Uh, I think you might be getting the picture of what I, what I was saying about how Nexus plays this game. Or, or rather this map. The Janus are coming in after Tech 2 mexes. Really not great at killing Tech 2 mexes. But uh, that did a good bit. That did a thousand damage. So in the second pass, if it does a thousand again, it's gonna get the kill on a thirty percent tech three max. That's efficient damage. That's <laughs> that, that hurts. So he needs to get these up to tech three so they have more HP. Maybe they'll survive then. No, oh no! Don't run away. Repair, repair. <laughs> Getting the anti air up. Looks like. The Janus are doing damage, but they're also dying. There's not a huge number of them coming in. <clears throat> Nex is cleaning up a bit of a mess in the bottom. He still doesn't have the bottom expansion, but if you look at the eco, Esperanto, a lot of tech on Mexes, and he's got a few tech two Nexus. Is really. Really stalling power heavily. But now he's done. The four mechs in his base will eventually get to tech 3, but he's not assisting them. He's paused all of these ones now. That's not great. Wagner's coming across. Going to be quite annoying. Nice factory, but uh, PD may take it out. PD is very nice against Wagner's. So Besperanto, good stuff. I love this. You might think this is bad. There's really nothing wrong with what Esperanto did here. I mean, it's better if you build them in like a circle, so you don't have to walk. But like, you do need to build basically that many pigeons. It depends on how fast you get to tech two, but yeah, you need a lot of them. Three, six, eight for Nexus. Eight is kind of the number. In the corner, uh, not sure what happened here. The factory has been reclaimed, and um, he's got two Sparkies and an engineer. So I don't know what the story is. Oh, 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 oh! Here it is. Here's the TMLs. You will not stop the UEF. Probably. I mean, maybe. Oh, oh, oh! Detected. Detected, surely. <laughs> there you go, TMD. TMD fires the missiles. Go, go, go. Fire. There's no time. TMD is up. And... 
the expansion is just dying to the Wagners now. Which is a very bad sign. Obviously. Um, nice to one attack, but there's no uh, artillery, so the PDs should be able to... PDs will stop everything here. <clears throat> uh, unless they can run past, but yeah, I imagine that attack will it'll be cleaned up without doing too much damage. The TMLs didn't get through. Too much TMD. Shield going up as well now for Nexus. He's got three Tech 3 P gens versus a single Tech 3 P gen for Esperanto. Esperanto with, you know, he does have a couple of Tech 3 Maxes. Just a couple. Um, top side in big trouble. Bombers and some Riptides being used to try and stave off the attacks from Nexus. Still doing little bits of damage, being annoying in the bottom side for Nexus as well. That's good stuff from Esperanto. Uh, but yeah, we got the four mechs in the base built to Tech 3. Another one here. Two more just finished. And some bricks moving across. So I don't know if we'll see drops. In terms of Navy... Looks quite even, but actually Tech 2 Navy for Esperanto here is quite nice. Would the APM of these fellas be SC2 Korean levels or what? No, no, no. No. Uh, you just don't need that level of APM. I mean, on on this map, of it, having Korean APM would be helpful. Just because there's an infinite things to actually do, but uh, in general, you don't need it because micro of units is nowhere near as. Um, oh, the strat just got killed. It's nowhere near as. Um, there's just not as much you can do micro wise with units in FAF, generally. Some units you can you you can micro, but you know. If you're fighting Thams versus uh, Mantis or something, there's a limit to what's achievable in terms of uh, winning even fights with Micro. And also the level of Micro and Faf is very low. That's... We, this should be clear to everyone. Hopefully. <clears throat> I say PM and Faf's probably UD. Uh, yeah. Yeah, UD. Probably. Not sure what the plan is for Esperanto now. Okay. Continentals. Love Continentals. The thing is, much harder to get Continentals through at this point in the game, but they are absolutely fantastic. I have crushed multiple games on this map with the Continentals and Percy's. It's an uh, extremely strong strategy. Nice TML here. <laughs> Just being reclaimed by by two engineers. That's going to be a, oh, a almost upgraded Tech 3 Max. He also killed this one. This one's Almost certainly, like 50% Tech 3 Max as well, I would say. Almost certainly. But we don't know for sure. Okay, Percy's out in the top side. Still lacking some Maxes. Still reclaim here to be taken. Continental's out. Where is it going to go? Nice annoying attack with some gunships here. And uh, the bottom right is going to be cleaned up because there's Tech 3 units moving across. And I don't see any in response from... Ooh, 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 ooh. That's a lot of Percy's on the bottom. 
Okay, we have 13 Percy's on the bottom side. Now, if you could get them, you get 12 of them into two Continentals. If you could somehow get those 12 of these into the base, then suddenly you have a chance to win the game. That's that's how it works. If he doesn't do that, then he's got to look for a different way to win the game because, um, I mean, winning Navy, definitely winning Navy, that's quite nice. He can just clean up, could maybe just hold back with the frigates, I don't know, kill all the production with the cruisers, but no, he's going for it, he's just going to push in. Just fair enough. Some random T1 bomber attacks doing some damage. Uh, looks like there's a lot of bricks coming through the water. Tech 3 Omni here is nice, nicely centralized. And uh, a Tech 3 sonar would help because these, these bricks are coming through. 28 bricks now on the field. God damn, that's a lot. Uh, how many Percy's do we have total? 18, so similar, but less for Esperanto. Yeah, bottom right side is cleaned up, and uh, there's still Reclaim here. Still Reclaim here, which means that's a very painful loss. He's losing, yeah, he's losing Mexes and stuff. That doesn't really matter. He's losing access to some of the last Reclaim probably available on the map. Plateau is clean. This plateau is not clean yet. Cruiser should be a very big boon to um, to air supremacy. Should should allow the ASFs to to stay safe. They can retreat to cruisers. Maybe even he can even get a fight over cruisers. But Nexus has taken a lot of damage, and now he's losing his um, losing his navy totally. Fighting back with Tech 3 Air. Whalers take out the Tech 3 Factory here, which is always a good target. It's very useful to kill Tech 3 production like that. It solves a lot of problems that you might have in the future. And uh, they're quite expensive. Kills a couple of Mexes. Now he's going to move away. Could even go after the Percy's. Killing some Percy's here would be quite nice. Cruiser comes in. I mean, with this many gunships, just kill the cruiser, to be honest. But there are more coming in, so you got to be careful. But, uh, yeah, whaler goes down. Another whaler continues taking shots. And the Percy's are in the base! He did it! He actually got the Continental in here. Six Percy's into the base. Wiped the grid. Instantly. Gone. Tech 2 P-Gens will be gone soon. And, uh... Now what, Nexus? Hello? There's the Tech 3 Pigeon under construction, not even close to being built. He may have just lost the game to six Percy's, and that's. <laughs> I haven't watched this game before, I promise, but that's. Uh, it's pretty clear this is where he, what he was what he was aiming for. So Percy's going down. The PDs are killing him. He's running. Where? What's he going to kill now? He's just killing Tech 1 Pigeons. So I think he's. He has power um, target priority on. Honestly, they've killed everything that they really need to kill. Even killing Tech 3 Max at this point is pretty irrelevant because Nexus has 380 power. What good are Tech 3 Maxes when you have 380 power? Look at that. And just like that, Esperanto is crushing. These Percy, uh, bricks have gotten through, killed. That's a tech, no, tech one, two mechs. Killed a lot of mechs and stuff. The top side, is he's lost all of the tech three production. Okay, that's completely dead. Very dynamic game here, all of a sudden. Just, uh, I mean, you know, there's damage being done the whole game, but now this base is gone, except for the four tech three mechs. Jesus. And Esperanto losing a lot of stuff too, but not losing his power. And, uh... God damn. Uh, wasn't the HQ here? Or was it always here? I don't know. There's whalers here that have died in the base. Strats from Esperanto uh, hanging around. What's he going to use those on? Uh, I'd imagine this. He's 
I think Nexus really fucked up going for a Tech 3 P Gen because he can't afford it. He and he's he's it's gonna take him so long to get there. Yeah, he's he's gonna control K because it's just so look how slow that's building. He actually needed to start with the Tech 2 P Gens. Uh because he's so low. 320 power, like <laughs> imagine if he killed the Hydro. <laughs> and here's the air fight. That uh, Esperanto is winning handily. Nexus ACU is, well, spotted. And. <laughs> and he types GG. Yeah. Goddamn. Continentals are. so good. Uh. And Percy's are the best unit to put in them, basically. So, just a brutal comeback, just because of, just because of that, just because of uh, Percy's. I mean, it was really one move that put Esperanto back in the game, and uh, yeah, it's kind of a problem with having no. No land production in your main base on the ditch. Uh, yeah, like the land production is all outside of the main base, which means you don't have that protection of units coming out of factories. Like if there was, but to be honest, even if there was a couple of bricks in the base, all the the whole grid would still die. Uh, basically, immediately, Percy's would die a little faster, but. But, um, yeah, also power production in all the one place. That's true. I mean, ha it is good to decentralize. Have some power production in, in this expansion as well. S is, yeah, it's kind of necessary, actually, on the ditch. And also, yeah, I mean, you know, Nexus probably could know that.
Okay. Okay, we're back. Oh my god, this fucking thing. I need a new mic, I think. Or fix this one somehow. Uh, anyway. Next. Oh, no luck. Okay. Nexus doesn't lose. Everyone loses. Okay. So we got Sprint in the bottom with Cybran, next on top with Seraphim. So I assume Esperanto will ban Cybran. And what next is banned? I don't know, maybe Seraphim. Maybe Aeon? Although I don't remember much Aeon play from Esperanto. Um. Yeah, so let's see. <laughs> yeah, both doing the same thing. First two NGs, the Hydro. They even built their factory in the same place with uh, adjacency. Are almost the same place. Third NG expands on the main island. Yeah, yeah. Fourth NG. Is idle. Fourth NG for Esperanto. Grab some trees. There's some tree groups here which you can grab. It's worth grabbing maybe a couple with the ACU here if they're still grouped and not burned. This end you can grab a couple as you will do and then expand to this island. Uh, this map, like I've played this map a lot. I'm I uh, actually lost to Dex on this map pretty poorly, just forgot to build P gens at a certain point in the group stage. Terrible fucking game. Um, I've never been totally confident in what I do here, even though I win a lot of the time. The opening is a bit of a mystery to me. So let's see what these guys do. Esperanto's making, he's made a bomber and he's circling around trying to avoid any and all interceptors and scouts. Mainly scouts at this point. Nexus fakes a drop to the left and then goes to the right. He's got an inti and he sent it home to defend. He scouted Esperanto's drop. Will he target it now? No, he's going to use his inti to defend. He's going to... Doesn't pick up the scout kill. That scout flew like right in front of the inti. Or at least it looked like that on the minimap. But uh, the inti didn't shoot. When I use patrol around the base and they have no intel ever. Um, it depends when... Depends on the scenario. It is good to do that in scenarios certain scenarios but uh, if you meant in the last game uh, I think he had an Omni I don't know though maybe he didn't have an Omni at that point in the game I mean oh Esperanto with the bomber this bomber is gold look at that three kills bit of a lazy split for Nexus he wasn't expecting a bomber I guess but yeah, that was a bad split there. Very bad split. 
And nice micro to get four kills. Song suggestion? No, sorry. I'm not I can't play any songs. Um Okay, transport coming for Nexus needs another one because well <laughs> Oh, we actually caught this transport with four engines on board. Two dropped here to build a factory immediately. And then I assumed the hydrocarbon, but uh, so neither player is able to, to get a foothold in this island at all. Nexus stopped once he got there. Esperanto stopped at about the same time, but uh, before he even reached it. And the bomber's still alive. That's a nice kill as well. Good stuff. Transport heading to the right again. Where's Esperanto's transport? Here it is. Idle in the base. Go, go, go. Time is of the essence. My cyborg friends. Go. Go, go, go. Well, I guess they're not cyborgs. They're just robots. Oh. You'd love to see it. What a bomber. This first bomber that came out of the air factory for Esperanto. It's an absolute murderer. It's only got half its fuel left at this point. Oh, oh, transport dead. At the cost of a few inties, maybe. If even. God damn, that's nasty. And, uh, yeah, Nexus will win air. Transport for Esperanto. Where did it ever go? Here it is. It's just hanging out again. It's idle again. Every time you look at it. Every time you look at it, it's stalling. Nine kills in the bomber. It's still alive. It's still alive. Nexus is spamming transports. This is not the Nexus we expect to see. He's fixed the transport spamming issue now, I think. Another transport. Another Inti targeting it. Oh, that's so frustrating. And uh, this bomber being alive is also extremely frustrating. A bit of micro again. Just to get the last 10th kill, I believe. Crazy. Also nearly killed a P-Gen. Nexus with his AC on the left. I think at this point, yeah, throw down a factory and then get to just run to this island with the ACU. Uh, don't build a second one, in my opinion. One is even... Yeah, one is enough. Get this NG to continue the expansion here. And just get the ACU across. Because... This is going to be a horrible fight now. He absolutely needs to get one of the islands. And he's in a terrible position to get the right side. Because he's been bombed. He's behind a, by a factory. Or maybe half a factory soon. Nice bomber from him. Kills the transport. Three, four NGs? Three NGs? Jesus. Revenge there. Okay, nice scout. It's hopefully, well, it will spot this transport perfectly. Yeah, Nexus, go, 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 my friend. He's, he, he's going to build this hydro, hopefully not. No, he's on the way, but he's built two factories. We'll have some Zooey's to support him now. The right-hand side is a mess. An absolute mess. This bomber is is a hero not on the same scale as SPs but a very valuable bomber no engineers now there's w one new NG comes out for Nexus he's one factory behind which means I mean that's not good that's what that means and simultaneous <laughs> almost simultaneous drops here four NGs versus three though one tank or sorry one Factory versus one. Uh, any bombers coming in? Speak of the devil. Here we go. He's making Medusa. Why? Because there's PD, I think. Um, yeah, there's PD and he doesn't need tanks. He has his ACU here. ACU going to walk in. Medusa killed the PD as well and killed the factory fast. And yeah, as you can see, now he's just switched to NG's. Perfect decision. Has to expand his quickly as possible get as many of the mexes on that island as he can as quickly as he can the second factory is denied by the bomber 
Nobody finding time. I mean, how do you find time to split the NGs or, God forbid, try and dodge these bombers at this point? And this is three factories versus one now. Tanks are out. The bomber's still flying overhead, bombing thams before they come out of the factory killing them in the factory on the factory floor and uh yeah pd is dead esperanto took actually a lot of damage so like you could even be tempted to just go snipe now now it is nexus so he does do that but he, he will do that if you're extending so you never know. It could be could be an idea for him, but I don't know if it's if it's really on his mind right now. We'll have to wait and see. He does have tech to air, but that's a normal thing for him. Normal thing for anyone to do on this map is go tech to air. It doesn't really mean that he's thinking about a snipe at all. But snipes are maybe one of the most underrated strategies on this map because there is a lot of mass here. And ACUs do frequently uh, move into vulnerable positions without upgrades. Nice bit of damage there for the frigates. Nexus has a bit of a job to do. He's not going to deny this PD before it goes up, so he's going to... Probably he's gonna have to retreat from this, I think. Yeah, time to back away. Even a few mantis, when they can all just shoot at the AC, will do a nice amount of damage. And the PD obviously quite a lot, wasting the zooies there. That's not great. The drop came in with more NG, so it, Nexus will eventually win this island. But oh, that's nasty. Yeah, this is very annoying stuff. It looks. Really good for for Esperanto now. Good damage on this island here. I always like to put naval production next to this island because sort of it does kind of defend the mexes a, a little bit. Not much. Just basically the frigates have to maneuver in between factories and things. Makes it harder to actually get to the mexes. Nexus now trying to kill these factories as fast as he can. So you can see the zooies just target the factories one by one, deny anything coming out of them. Because they'll just the shells will land right in the middle, and generally, no. Oh. Okay, I guess they'll rarely land right in the middle, but usually they do enough to kill the thing anyway, even if only one part of the shell hits. And uh, yeah, next is also getting some vet, but this this one factory, three engineers dropped, and he's going to just be super annoying and delay the expansion of this island by maybe minutes tech 2 maxes are being upgraded the first one and we have a tech 2 pigeon built as well tech 2 pigeon here and nexus actually has two tech 2 maxes but much superior expansion for esperanto He is finally getting kicked off this island uh, in this position, the main position he had, but like just this one factory. I can't emphasize how effective that is. That's so efficient as well. There's three NGs. He's stealing mexes. He's killing mexes. A very, very good move. And he doesn't go and try and build like five factories and like actually fight for the island. No need to do that. Just build one factory. That's all you need. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Nice gunship from Nexus. Doing some return damage, but uh, it should be cleaned up quickly, you'd expect. But there's, I don't see any inties coming towards it. So this is going to be quite nice damage. lags uh, I have no dropped frames here so if it lags I'm sorry but it's not my it's not on my end at least pretty nice it won't take too long to replace the mexes 
but that's quite nice damage there. And Nexus needs every bit of that he can get. The game is still pretty close. Nexus trying to eco up. Will he go tech to land? Oh, oh, the Corsairs are in. That's a lot of Corsairs. Oh, this is game over, isn't it? This is game over. Too many Corsairs. Wow. Well, hey, look, I said snipes are pretty good on this map. Exposed ACUs with no upgrades. Um, he's dodging like a professional, but there's only so much you can dodge. Uh, yeah, really nice. Good snipe. I mean, yeah, the problem for Nexus there is he had no time to really do. He had to use his ACU like that. He had no time to do, to make upgrades or things like that. He was kind of forced to go to this position. Maybe once he got here, he could have run away immediately. Probably, maybe. That's an idea. I mean, it's all in hindsight, but maybe once he cleaned up those factories, he could run away towards here. Not that that's going to be that much safer, but uh, yeah, nice. Uh, a good a good way to win the game here by Esperanto nice overflow as well <laughs> AC in the water here uh, stealth is so good in these um, scenarios no stealth for Nexus to hide with and uh, also looked like this we had more Navy by the way 24 cyber and frigs versus 20 oh, almost oh, well, fucking identical navies but cyber and frigates are What you want? Uh, hey, stop spoiling! All right, shut up or I ban you. I'll ban all of you and you can just watch instead of chatting.
<laughs> okay, I need to get some tape to make sure this doesn't go again. So, one sec. I need to tape this to the table. my old friend okay let's go hopefully we stay you know audible okay apologies right so what the hell is this map Yeah, I think I will speed it up, but for now we'll just check the map out. Not not a huge amount of reclaim. Decent bit in the back. It looks like it's those trees. The alien trees. Uh, yeah, okay. We got three main expansions on the, the main island. We got an island here with some sieves and a hydro. Seven mexes. Same here in the middle plateau. A little bit of reclaim, two mexes. I got the tactical paint thing. Uh, yeah. I think I do. Oh, no, I disabled it. Oh wait, no. Yeah, I have this one. The mod. Yeah. I don't really like it. Reclaim batching. Um, seems fine to me, honestly. I I don't mind it. I th uh, people really don't like it. It seems like, but I don't fully understand why they don't like it. Actually, like if I did this. Yeah, it means there's less numbers on the screen, which I'm a fan of. And it's like, okay, there's 440 mass there. Let's zoom in. Yeah, okay, now I can see it, you know, gives me a more detailed view. So I don't actually, what, like, I don't know what the issue is. Anyway, second land from Denji. Weird move to go second land here. I would have thought. Really weird. This is tactical paint. Yeah, no idea why you got second land. Uh, I guess you will have more engines, obviously. You can maybe grab your main island a little faster. Although you are expanding very quickly to to all of those mexes. Well, let's wait. Actually, let's see. Well, Nexus is faster. Okay, Nexus is already building this expansion, and this expansion you are not. You're actually not going to be there for a while, uh, but you are building this one. Um. But yeah, even though you go third air, you actually are dead even Esperanto on, on air right now. Bomber coming out for Esperanto. In terms of massing up though, Nexus should be ahead. And he is. And he's also going to get to the front base faster. So overall, I'm, I kind of like what Nexus has done. 
uh, well, I definitely like what Nexus has done. And people would be like, oh my god, he's floating mass. It's fine. He's, he has more mass than his opponent. If some of it's in storage uh, at the start, that's fine because he will spend it. It's like, uh, I think it's one of the things that people maybe overemphasize in the game is having mass in storage. That's, oh my god, this is fucking brutal. Uh, yeah, I think it's one of the things, because it's easy to just look, it's like, oh yeah, look, he's, he's loads of mass. It's like, it's very clear when it happens, but, uh, uh, <laughs> very often when I see people who have mass in storage, they have more mass than their opponent. Uh, so, <laughs> if you take that into account, it's not really a big deal, because it will be spent. Okay, bomber coming in. I believe this NG is the target. He's got one mechs left to finish. And he is not going to finish it. So, one mechs denied. And, you know, factory, perhaps. Radar, perhaps, denied. Oh, no. Oh, transport, drop it. Don't. He's going to keep flying. If he gets two more shots, uh, he's dead. He needs to drop... Is he going to make it? No! <laughs> oh no! Oh my god! Esperanto with the massive NG split. They've gone in all directions. Now they're coming back together to build a factory, but he hasn't built, killed the bomber. But to, it'll still take three more passes to kill NG. He's so actually doing another split now. Uh, that was a mistake from Nexus. You'll say he, he some people say he got unlucky to not land there. Uh, I don't agree. He had 100 HP. An Inti from UEF does 50 damage immediately. As soon as it hits. That's two shots. You can't uh, expect that you're just gonna land that. That's so risky. Because he could just he could just walk. It's a beach. It's not a it's not a cliff. That's not a cliff edge. That's a beach. So he can just land in the water, and walk, and then they can't be killed by Inties. So was he unlucky? Yeah, it was super tight. But he did not need to risk that. So yeah. Right, Nexus upgrading Mexes now very early. Tries to land, okay. He lands just in the water. <laughs> and, uh. Oh no, here comes a bomber. And. Just one NG. Oh no, two. What the f. Okay, one NG survives and two NGs go down in, uh. That's a weird bomb. One of the one of the bombs landed way before the other ones, so that's just UEF bomber things. Uh, Denji making some mexes here. He's already got two. There's a third tech two mex. He's got the left island, and the right island. He's in a well. It doesn't look like he's gonna win it, but he is fighting for it and forcing Nexus to fight for it. So. Um, yeah, here comes the second factory, so Nexus should be secure in this. Nexus looks like he has total air control right now, Like, uh, but Esperanto is, is taking mid for free in the meantime. One of these bombers should be sent to middle, should be expecting something to land there, and uh, some scouting as well. Yeah, bomber will, will, should really just... <laughs> just be taking out these NGs and there's tech 2 air from from Esperanto who is looking in okay look, looking like he's in a good position with insane lack of radar so but unlikely there's gonna be too many attacks coming in some bombers could come in and do some damage uh, it does take three passes of a cyber bomber to kill a UEF mechs though so so yeah 
Tech 2 Pigeon now. Started. Factory's going down here uh, without any air. I mean, there's no way to do anything. Little lab drop to the front for Esperanto. That's going to do some damage. Should be able to kill the whole expansion here unless a bomber comes in. And if a bomber does come in, if he's moving, he'll he'll do the damage anyway. Keep moving. Could have sent the transport back, but it would die anyway. Okay, bomber's coming in. He's going to try and fight the middle with just tech 1 bombers. He needs some, some tech 2 air units to really clean that mess up. Still hasn't taken the expansion here. He's been denied so much uh, for so long. And he's got three factories which are unlikely to be useful unless he goes for some tech 2 drops or even tech 1 drops which you know wouldn't be a shock for him to do that uh, doesn't have any naval production right now and Esperanto does Esperanto's four frigates out and four frigates versus zero means it could be a bit tricky to get in the water uh, in places Janus is is the plan at this point in the game for Esperanto who has a very solid lead right now economically doesn't have air control but with the with the um, Janus spam he could well win air control back because you can pump so much mass into these things and they are actually quite good anti-air fighters would I think tech 3 navy could get through here I would I would not bet on it like no I wouldn't bet on that because yeah that's it's a shallow it's not a steep beach it's a shallow beach it sort of goes down gradually I wouldn't I would never count on tech 3 units getting through there I consider them almost as two separate oceans. That is an incredible fight for Esperanto. Oh my god, and some of them are so low. Some of those Janus. Okay, I just want to pause here. This one, 16 HP, 112, 40, 248. There's some yellow ones in there as well. Oh, what a fight! What a fight! Look how many Janus this guy has. Twenty Janus now. Virtually impossible to win an air fight against twenty Janus with Inties and no other anti-air like flax and things. Uh, air staging of the Middle Island would be fantastic. The Janus come in, clean up the Mantis there. Nice factory to quickly replace the fallen mechs yeah that fight was filthy you feel like unless nexus gets to tech 3 air he's not going to win back air he looks like, yeah okay so right there he was planning two tech 2 air factories right and i think he thought the better of it and thought you know what that's not going to win me air back Okay, two static flax though. That's gonna do a huge amount of damage. They go, they get stomped, and now the Janus. No, no. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, that was exceptional from Nexus. He ha he got two static flax up here. They did huge damage. And also he had some tech one and year around. And uh, managed to get in behind the Janus. He's killing more of them now. Fantastic defense there. Good drop. Really good drop. That looks like a tech two drop. From Esperanto. Going to kill this whole expansion including the factory. And Nexus one air. Still no navy for Nexus. Oh wait no sorry. He has one naval factory. And one frigate it's, that I can see. Uh, you should attack everything except base. Yeah. 
But to be honest, Nexus built those two static flex really fast under a shield. So it was a good reaction from him. But yeah, you could absolutely just clean up this island, take that back. Like, just imagine if you just use the Janus to take the three islands, and then it's three versus one, then at that point you're already GG. You just move to tech three air or tech two navy or both, and gradually close out the game or something. You know, that's how I would think anyway. Janusing the base is... Uh, a much riskier proposition. Okay. Corsairs from Nexus doing some damage. Mex is going down. Another air fight now with the Janus involved, but there's not enough Janus and they're r just running away. Units here are actually maybe maybe they're new units. No, they look like old units because they've got veterancy. They're now dropped to the back and the whole back is dead. Four Mexes back here. And there were all three of those were tech two. That one was tech two as well. This damage is absurd. Another drop here, and he's gonna rush a PD to kill the mechs. But he's stalling. Insane amounts of mass. So it's and now energy, and now mass, and now energy. <laughs> he's he's all over the place, economically, but uh, it's working. He's about to finish his tech three PG on his second one. It's actually, uh, I mean, I don't know, I, you don't see that kind of attack very often, but it is very effective to just drop um, NGs and build a PD. It's, it's actually pretty good. Even if there's only one Tech 2 mechs, it's, it, you know, it's not amazing, but it's pretty good. If there's two Tech 2 mechs, great. Right, third tech 3 pgen. Yeah, it's all about air for Esperanto right now. He's just struggling to... He just wants to build so much air and he just can't afford it. Once he gets the third one up, uh, we might just start seeing his whole base go to tech 2 max, I'd expect. And tech 2 navy? Maybe? He's got cruisers. Very nice cruisers. This expansion and this expansion. This can all die to cruisers. Um, BDE vibes. I don't know what that is. Um, tech three max for Nexus. Nice. Only one tech three P gen at the moment, so yeah, going to be limited in his air production. But somehow Nexus with like the same mass income. How's that happened? Crazy. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> Four Tech Three P gens. Okay, yeah. Now he's just overflow. He's put all of his mass into Tech Three P gens. This is really bad. Uh, eco, honestly. Surely he's just gonna overflow all of this. Yeah, it's it's only once he's reclaiming something that he can actually use the energy. So. Like, say, once he reclaims this P-Gen for mass, then he might spend his, his power briefly. Bit of a proxy here. Going to try and take back the the island. He's got 16 ASF now. Versus 13. Nexus, you can see how Nexus balances his eco is uh, a lot different. It's pretty nice to watch. Minus 60 stall. I mean, it's a bit of a stall, but he is most of the way to ne his next tech 3 max, so that'll be solved shortly. This is definitely a map you would favor Nexus on. And it seems like a lot of the advantage that Esperanto has is kind of dissipated because he built at least one tech 3 P gen too many. At least one, maybe two. Um, he has got full tech to max in his island, though, or he's he's about to get that. Okay, a very adventurous attack with fourteen frigates. 
Managed just to kill a, a factory. I wonder if that was going tech two. Probably not. As there's no dead engies around it. But uh, it gets pulled pushed away by torps, but then the torps just let the frigates escape. Okay. Nice storage tech one max there. Nexus has found the the proxy. <laughs> oh my god, look how many factories he has to build now to stop the proxy. Such a weird fight. I mean, neither of them seems to really want to commit air there because they don't want to fight air for this island right now. Neither of them do. Maybe, I mean, you'd expect Esperanto should definitely be ahead on air shortly. Oh wait, he already is, I assume. 34 to... 24, yeah, he's in a in a commanding air position, as you'd expect with all those pigeons. He wanted an Omni so fast, yeah. I mean, that's fair. Omni's great. Uh, oh, it's taking damage. Oh, you don't want to repair that shit. That's like the you never want to repair an Omni. <laughs> Because it dies in one shot, I won't say anything anyway. Could definitely do with some power adjacency as well to knock it down to, what, 1500, I think? So maybe 500 power. Next is cleaning this up. Time to turn off all the factories again, unless he's going to be dr doing a lot of drops. He has enough units here to clean all of this up. I think the frigate's trying to defend the factories, but that's unlikely to work. These, these mexes can be killed. The mechs is over here that can't be killed by frigates are upgraded, or at least a couple of them are. Sam's in the middle island to secure a huge amount of position from any air. And yeah, if you end up with Sam's and cruisers, like, the only way to attack with air is going to be through here, and maybe through the bottom, but that's a very long route. Uh, yeah, so Nexus is building his diagonal grid of P-Gens. Planning for an Omni soon. Maybe very soon, another Tech 3 Mechs. Nexus is ahead on, on mass now, he's just ecoing faster. And, of course, very efficiently, but he does not have Navy. I don't see Tech 2 Navy. Esperanto doesn't see Tech 2 Navy. 59 ASF to 51, slightly behind his Nexus. But also there's cruisers in place, so that's a problem too. No TMD to defend this means it's surely just going to die very soon. As the front is dead now, and the problem is the cruisers... The problem for Nexus is that the cruisers will also probably kill, the, kill all the reclaim from the Mexus, so... Yeah, nasty. Ooh, strat to the back. Two dead mechs there. This one, also dead. Not upgrading, but a good kill. And now back for the fourth max. A fifth max may go down. The ASFs are not watching. He hasn't realized. Okay, this should be... Okay, might get one more. Might get one more. He does. He actually gets the last one. So, one, two... Three, four, five, six plus storages as well on some of them. That's a good strat. That is a good strat. And uh, Nexus doesn't have. He has some engines in the back, but he doesn't have a factory back there. Um, he also needs to grab this strat wreck as well as fast as possible. Looks really good for Pepsi now. Frigates doing some raiding. Oh, both Tech 2 Mexes here died as well. I'm not sure how... Oh! Maybe this TML? No. It doesn't have any kills. Something else did it. Now, the main thing is to not miss the air fight that is inevitably coming, but uh, to be honest, it just looks worse and worse for Nexus as the game goes on. Um, although he was in a decent position economically there not too long ago, I mean, he's now lost so many Tech 2 Maxes. Oh, Corsairs. 
get rid of that cruiser, but not before it kills almost everything here. Yeah, see, killing reclaim as well. Nasty. One mech survives. T2 subs out. Very, very nice unit. They have stealth. They are good against uh, UEF cruisers, of course. They're fantastic against them. The cruisers can't shoot back. Good against the destroyers who have... Uh, do they have any torp defense, actually? They might have... They have they do have torpedoes, but they fire very slowly. Uh, but yeah, if you do s sit under them with two barracudas, they will die, however. Because the barracudas themselves don't have any torp defense. So anything you fire at them is going to land unless there's another unit with torp defense around, like a mermaid, the stealth boat, or a destroyer. Did I just look away and he just lost his destroyers or did he retreat? Okay, I thought I missed the air fight, but no, Esperanto was over here with most of his air. So I guess it was other things dying. There goes... Okay, so Nexus just took out the Tech 2 Naval HQ with uh, a bunch of Corsairs, I assume. Or maybe Torps. Torps or Corsairs? Okay, more subs coming in. Getting way too close to the to the destroyers and getting killed. But still, the torps, the subs will eventually do good if he can just micro a little bit better. We got the Omni, got a big grid. The back is still not ecoed, still missing this mechs. Um, needs to replace those those mexes. Oh my god, he's playing with fire here. He's Nexus wants the air fight, actually. Okay, let's see how it goes. There's so many Sams in the middle that it's really impossible to force a fight here. I mean, Esperanto, look how many Sams he has. He's he, This is not a very good Sam positioning, I will say. Like, no Sam at this end of the base. And uh, Sam, six Sams next to each other. Sam, seven? Basically all overlapping it's not great 131 not great positioning 131 to 136 dead even numbers nexus has probably the best air micro uh in the game that i'm aware of definitely one of the best But I remember doing some uh, ASF. Okay, here comes Tech 2 Navy. Uh, support factory. There's already a HQ at home. Um, I definitely remember being in some sandbox with Nexus and several other players. And Nexus was crushing uh, pretty much everyone in there. Oh, here's the air fight. And he's avoided the Sams. Imagine there were Sams on this island. Uh, and at this end of the island, they'd be doing huge damage right now. And Nexus looks like he's losing. Yeah, he actually loses the fight there. So forced the fight, lost it, but does kill the, almost all of the left island. He's going to lose the Corsairs now. And he's pushing with the Navy. He's pushing through this tiny gap. God, that gap is disgusting but he is getting through the subs have almost no trouble getting through going after the destroyers destroyer going down look how quickly it dies here I mean we are sped up have to point that out but still killing quite quickly one sub goes down the other two still very healthy looking thousand health thousand mass kill each torps coming out now that's air is one oh my god the sam is just crushing the few ASF to come in. There's a s random strat there, almost. Almost goes down, it's killing frigates. Not the best target for a... And yeah, Nexus forced to retreat, so... Look at the mass on Pepsi's side. Look at this mass field, and uh, there's gonna be another mass field here from the dead ships of Nexus. He comes in with his ASF to snipe some 
Torps has to get out of there before he's caught and he does okay if we look at Eco Esperanto ahead on Eco and he's built so many torpedo launchers or bombers sorry cruiser is here it's gonna do a good bit of damage it's not being focused but uh, I mean most of the Navy is is dead now now it was, seemed like it was mostly frigates that were targeted there's some tech 2 units that died okay let's take a look at the bases see if we have anything in here I don't know why there's a 15 health omni sensor here unfinished that's a decent bit of mass in there it's kinda of funny this production here is very nice could be it would would have been a great target actually go for the cruiser he could have gone for cruiser and uh, killed this naval production would have been nice with the torps harder now the, there's a couple more cruisers out and uh, he has to obviously keep making air now because he can't just make torps forever and still maintain air control uh, SMD in Esperanto's base the sign of a player who is uh, in control of the game Torps come in and they try and get away as well most of them get away huge mass field building Esperanto with a lot of engines in the water here grabbing reclaim I always find it's better to have them on different attack orders they because they just seem to do better when they have their own order but it's a minor thing I mean really just factory attack move is probably the way to go if you can remember to move them around full tech 3 mechs at the back now four tech 3 mechs back here that's yeah two at the front he's gonna have another another one there Th almost at 400 mass per take his next is at 320 strats strats just came in and bombed this whole air grid holy fuck how did I miss that terrible casting this man just bombed Nexus whole grid I mean he actually has I mean look it's one two three four P gens three of them low HP god damn he lost one two three four P gens and six factories it looks like that's expensive god damn and still torps just flying overhead cruisers getting a lot of kills on those torps but because Nexus is so far behind in um, in uh, in mass anyway you don't have to be as efficient anymore you just need to keep your opponent at bay and uh, yeah this attack with the strats was fantastic huge damage there and uh, yeah I mean you could think that maybe Esperanto could have built a nuke instead of a nuke defense but playing it safe with the nuke defense there tech 3 navy the BC is about to finish yeah that, that's his first one Sam's going down to Salem's in the middle and the mechs as well the Omni in the middle also died at some point and it's been replaced even further forward nice and also on the left side which is good I guess it died when there was this Navy push in this position hey what's up oh TML is flying <laughs> this TML launcher let's go what's it gonna hit probably nothing too important where is it going a factory a PD no a factory 
<laughs> He's just gonna TML every factory, okay. Fair enough. Why not? People will say, oh, it's not efficient. Well, it's pretty efficient to kill all your opponent's factories from over here. I think that's a pretty good move. Nice counter there with the bombers. Nexus seems to think it's a good move. Uh, TML goes down to those bombers. Very nice. Uh, nothing else happening in the base that I can see that's interesting. Just continuing eco, continuing attrition on the front line, and uh, the BC. Wherever did it go? Here it is. And I'm guessing that here it just, you know, can't fit through. Can delay reclaiming yeah you can i mean yeah it's not a big deal but yeah you can you could do that i mean he has a lot of ngs it's very hard to delay nexus from reclaiming he's always got ngs in the right spots it seems or generally strats finally being reclaimed the grid being expanded after it's been uh repaired nexus making tech three doesn't have ras yet uh, does anyone have RAS? People generally forget about RAS in 1v1, I find. I don't know where... Where is... Oh, he's in the water. Okay, RAS, Shield, Tech 2. Might as well go Tech 3 as well. Uh, Battleship... Probably makes more sense. Yeah, I mean, given the fact that he can't seem to get through here, a Battleship would make sense. To at least shoot a lot further. You would rather have the battle cruiser. It's just the better unit for what he's up against. But the fact that it can't get through this gap is, uh, yeah, makes it basically, I mean, not useless. As you can see, if Nexus tries to get through here, it is the most perfect meat grinder I've ever seen in FAF. Like this is this is phenomenal. The units are so buggy coming through. Here, they're like bouncing around sideways even though there's nothing in their way. Uh, just a perfect meat grinder, but obviously if he can't get through, he can't win the Navy because Nexus just stays over here. So He needs actually na naval production on that side of the map, or he just needs to get cruisers over here, just do damage, you know. There's really no reason there's there for cruisers not to be here except unless he loses them to to air. If we look at what, what we got, 130, 40 ASFs to okay, yeah, actually Nexus has oh, he keeps flying over these Sams. Let's check the kills on these Sams. But you know what? He hasn't flown into them too much. But uh, yeah, I mean that has ten kills. 3 kills, 1700 mass, 1100, so they have, they've been super annoying for, for Nexus to, to deal with. BC's moving up the left side, Tech 1 bombers coming after Cyber and Frigates, what a world we live in today. Crazy bit of business. Salem can walk on land, should just go on the beach. Oh my god. Could you imagine if he just walked up here with Salem's? <laughs> I mean, it's unlikely he would really... Maybe he could He could get to these mechs. That's all Tech 3. I mean, this is full Tech 3. Kind of amazing there's, like, no defenses for either player. Like, at this stage of the game, you'd be thinking Sam and Shield around Tech 3 mechs like that. Because they're so easily killed. One torpedo bomber takes it upon himself to try and kill this factory let's see how well that goes for him he's already a veteran doing his best he actually cancelled the Salem all right okay the BC is here but there's n the two BCs have they actually have killed a lot of stuff but they have nothing to kill right now What's next? Cruisers. Oh, more. He has two more BCs here. 
He has four battle ba battle cruisers, <laughs> and they can't do anything. He's gonna try and get through. You can see the frigates here, just barely seem to squeeze through. Like they can't go through in a straight straight line. They have to come here, and then it's like this is jutting out, so they're like going around it. Here comes the nuke, and then the BC is like, no, I'm good actually. Okay, battle. The nuke is launched. That's gonna land. That's for sure landing. Is this the end of the game here? Cause uh, yeah, he's he has a lot of assists on that, a lot of Tech Three engineers, but that's not gonna be enough. <laughs> Surely it's not gonna be enough. Oh, it's close. <laughs> he's he's getting close. <laughs> No, 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 no way. That is so much build power. Come on, for fuck's sake. How many NGs is that? 27 tech 3 NGs. 800 build power. That's how much it is. 800 build power in just the tech 3 NGs. That's most of it. So you basically doubled the rate of... of missile building. The Salem's did come on land, and uh, okay, that's what I was worried about. They would be just be murdered by scorchers, and that's what's happened so far. Okay, that was last second stuff. There's another nuke on the way, though. About, what, one third? Two fifths of the way there. Um, so we'll see. And he's not assisting that nuke defense very hard anymore. Moved, moved on to build uh, P gens. Front base dies to cruisers. Battle cruisers just hold down the fort in this area. I mean, that's all, all they can do. And they hold down this front. Salem's moving forward, trying to get towards these Tech 3 mexes, the juicy Tech 3 mexes. Trying to defend them from scorchers as well. You really would hate to fight air here though because if he does fight air win or lose I mean he's not gonna win by a huge margin anyway if he does win but so win or lose there's gonna be a huge amount of reek time here if he does fight air so it's really not probably not ever gonna be worth it to fight for the Salem's um so Esperanto should use that and really be kind of aggressive with the air here I think also Nexus should have an air an uh, Intel issue fighting air in this position oh oh don't go in there don't go in there nexus just let them go the salems are gone you can't save them one tech three mex goes down that's all not a critical attack cruisers so much more effective all those tech three mexes are gonna die and uh, he's back to assisting that <laughs> smd as hard as he can I mean, Esperanto also has a lot of build power assisting the launcher. Is that like 700 build power? Almost 800 build power, yeah, assisting the nuke. And uh, nuke has 1500, so it's not quite doubling it, but... Nice mass stall. Oh yeah, he is stalling very heavily, actually. That's very bad for the nuke. Nuke subs. Does he have any? He's got four BCs for ages. What was he making out of that Tech 3 factory since then? I don't see a nuke sub anywhere. I don't think he has one. He does have quite a lot of cruisers. Gunships fighting Cybern frigates. I mean, once you have that many gunships, they can actually... I mean, yeah, they are going to win, but... Is it the best way to use them? I don't know. Are the frigates really much of a threat? Probably not. Yeah, without the stall, this nuke would be loaded already. <laughs> Yudi's here to roast uh, ladder players on their late game technique. We love it. Okay, four battleships out for Nexus. He's got he stopped almost all of his frigate. He just switched some of it back on. 
He's lost six Tech Three Maxes though, and he's not getting the Mac. So that's, I mean, that's brutal. He's lost six of his core Maxes basically. Doesn't have much eco on this island. He's got some Tech Two, no Tech Three there. Esperanto with 600 mass income to about 450. Uh, one of those numbers is a lot bigger than the other. And bigger is better. So the Stone Ager has another in the clip, but uh, so does the SMD, the Guardian. T3 Arty when? Well, I don't think you'd reach the base with T3 Arty. I think you have to build it forward. Oh, no, actually, you don't, well, you don't have to build it here to reach the whole base. Um, and you'd also hit the naval production, possibly. So, definitely an option. Okay, front base is going to die to battleships. Uh, ooh, that's about to finish upgrading. Yeah, so the all the all the front mechs should die from SP as well. But he, look at this. Tech 3 mechs on this island. Full tech 3 mechs here. Even this one has tech 3, uh, but it doesn't have storages. One says Denji. Don't know what that's about. That's a lot of Sams. <laughs> what what's all this what are all the Sams for? Is he afraid of like all of the uh, gunships coming in? Where's that nuke lo going? Um. <laughs> um, Esperanto, why, why in the name of God are you putting your nuke there? What is the purpose of that? What is the purpose of this many Sams against a faction that has no? Is he at Unicap? Yeah, what's the purpose of that many Sams against the, uh, someone with no air experimental? Going to kill Omni. Okay. Omni is worth a little bit. Will you kill it though? Oh, you just, just barely got it. Okay, so you're sniping. So yeah, you can see he built, he, he killed it right at the edge of, um, just outside the range of uh, SMD. Omni died, Tech 3 Max died, Tech 3 Factory building a strat died, and that's about it. Nexus needs to replace the Omni. He is going to do that now. Uh, there's the Omni, it's back. Oh my god, that's a lot of fucking strats coming around the back here. Esperanto won't see them. Uh, as you can see, here's the actual Omni range. Here's the radar range. So within this range, stealth is useless. Within this range, stealth is extremely useful. Some mass in the bank. He might need that once the strats kill a lot of his shit what's he targeting yeah he's just going for the nuke and most of the grid here and he may he probably also kill the smd with the explosion maybe maybe not no he probably won't kill it he may have to finish that off after but he doesn't have a nuke anyway that i know of okay the shields did great work there basically denied the first kills but now the nuke goes down This P Gen lives. Oh, there we go. SMD goes down as well. Several factories. Oh, will he get this kill? So many strats. Needs to kill as many P Gens as he can. There goes two more. Oh, there's another one. Another P Gen going to go down. Two P Gens go down. Just misses out on this one as well. Else from the map, I don't see anything happening that I've missed. And that's... Okay, he's got one, two, three, four P-Gens. Plus Ras is nice. That's like one other P-Gen. So... 
he's not without power, but that was an absolutely brutal attack. BC dying to uh, battleships, as it does. Oh, the, the battleship missing quite a lot, actually. Probably because it's on the move. Insane air fight, I guess. Was there an air fight here? <laughs> what the fuck? A lot of strats for Esperanto. Dead here. What the hell happened? How did all the strats die? And they don't look like they killed really anything. Am I crazy or is that the case? Uh, and there's still loads of ASF, so how is there an air fight? I don't know. I'm confused now. 200 ASF to 132, so way more ASF for Esperanto. There, these Sams have so many kills. So many kills. And there's so many of them. 28 Sams in one screen. One small screen. Middle Island getting cleaned up. Um... Sam's going down to to the battleships. What a mess of a game. Uh, Esperanto also has nuke subs, and there's just Barracudas infiltrating him. Uh, where where are the nuke subs? I know he's building one. Has he lost a nuke sub already? That's a dead BC. I think he just lost a BC there as well. Okay, he is. No, no, he's retreating with his BCs. There's the nuke subs. Four nuke subs here, plus 200 mass. The nuke subs are actually firing. They do have a powerful TML on them. Um, he's got. All four of them are basically upgrading at the same time. You cancel it at 70%. <laughs> okay. I don't know why there's strats flying over the navy. There's absolutely no... Oh, there are some coop. Yeah, there's actually a lot of coopers here now. No shields. I don't think I've seen a single shield boat from Esperanto in the whole game. Um, his grid is gradually reforming. He's got another SMD now. Did Nexus take the time to build... Yeah, he was building a nuke at the time. And he's also going to try to build a bug. I don't think he can... Well, that bug has to take second priority to um, to the to the nuke for sure. He really needs to focus on... If he can land a nuke here again, that would be amazing. The Barracudas have been pretty, pretty exceptional, honestly. As has this battleship. 18,000 mass killed. <laughs> Ooh. But uh, Nexus just falling further and further behind eco-wise. He really needs to land a nuke on this base again, in my opinion. And that's what he's going to try and do. Hopefully, he really needs to focus on just not ever stalling, which is... Of course, he knows that. If you stall, basically the way nuke or any silo works is that they just don't they they basically won't get the resources that they should be getting by rights when you stall they basically will get almost almost no resources to the to building the missile ngs aren't affected by this they'll get what they deserve at any point but silos not so much so it's good to have it assisted as well prevents that problem from occurring uh, so many barracudas <laughs> yeah if the coopers had a couple of shields it'd be a lot easier for them oh my god he's coming for it. he's coming for the for the cruisers and uh, guess what the nuke subs are over here as well four of them loading four of them loading I wonder have you have you you probably already cancelled the nukes I guess have you and this is the second go around Decent bit of mass killed on some of those, but yeah, it's the nukes that really have to land. No Omni for Esperanto anymore. Grid is, is back up and running. 
mm, pretty good shielding as well. And yeah, the Barracuda is turning around now. They've actually wiped almost every cruiser. <laughs> That's it. He wiped every cruiser here, but he didn't find the nuke subs. And he should know there's nuke subs because they haven't been firing at him. Now they're on hold fire, so not to give away the position. That's a nuke from Nexus. And that's going... That has to be going... Yeah, there you go. Directly onto the SMD, actually. That nuke's landing. Oh. <gasps> Oh no, there's where he cancelled the nukes. He had four of them building. And he cancelled them all. <laughs> That's when you cancel. Oh god, I thought you'd already cancel them. That's. You cancel them just as you're gonna get nuked. Oh my god, I think I would. Oh my god, that was so close to loading. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, how could you deal with that? Mentally and emotionally. Oh. Right, well, uh, looks pretty good for Nexus right now. Looks pretty good. <laughs> These nuke subs are gonna have a hard time loading with the uh, what fifteen four and a half thousand each to load. Um, how's the air looking? We got three hundred ASF, hundred of them out of fuel. Way more ASF for Esperanto. Oh, strats. These barracudas are. Filthy. Make some torps. Uh, yeah, so now he's down to. Well, actually, he's got some nice spread out P gens. Still has his air HQ as well, which is good. But other than that, the base is pretty much wiped. Has to rebuild the nuke defense ASAP once again. Soul Ripper coming up, but that seems. Seems like a weird decision for Nexus to go for Soul Ripper here, considering. His um his air situation, he has less air. Weird that there's Come on, use the torps. Get rid of these barracudas once and for all. But uh yeah, Soul Ripper is interesting. We'll have to see. Now of course with the tech four you you can definitely bait ASFs and win an air fight using them. Uh, as like a tank so that's one option also the fact that Esperanto is out of fuel with a hundred of his ASFs mean that he really doesn't have 300 he has 200 and once he tries to go and fight he might find himself with a weaker air force yeah I tried to, s <laughs> tried to kill the tech 3 HQ UAF has a lot of HP so difficult to do that with submarines um, doesn't succeed. All right, Esperanto is marking basically the edge of. Um, well, this is the edge of of this is the ACU, and this is the edge of the SMD range. Solar Ripper instantly loses thirty k HP now, and uh, retreats. Has no regen at the minute. Building a second Solar Ripper. Okay, so yeah, he's marked the ACU for termination. Nuke subs back up to about 55 60%, which is uh, pretty good considering his power situation it was terrible there. Didn't finish the SMD and still built all of his P gens in nukeable range, it's pretty bad. I mean, I guess he needs the power fast, so he doesn't want to walk around, but like. Yeah, spread that shit out. All these pigeons will die to, to one nuke. It's created a bit of a target. And I'm interested in the fact that he's he's marked the ACU, but I guess the only thing he has to kill 
the issue right now is um, is the nukes from the nuke sub. That's pretty much like he doesn't have any strats or any. No, he has four strats, but four strats aren't going to kill an ACU at this point. No way. So that's not what they're for. Nuke subs are still hiding here. If like where Nexus? Do you have sonar? Nexus doesn't have Tech Three sonar. He doesn't have Tech 3 Sonar. If he did, he would see it. Okay, there we go. That That's going to be wiped again. 106,000 mass killed. It's going to be another, what, 40, 50, 60k on top of that, maybe. Well, there's no factories. Well, one factory, a couple of Tech 3 mexes. It's a lot of damage. Nexus has four anti nukes in his SMD. The problem will be the fire rate of the SMD if all four nukes are launched at once and from close range at his face. That's going to make it pretty hard to dodge. <laughs> pretty hard to dodge. Okay, there's the nuke from Nexus. Lands in the perfect spot. Just gets his mechs. And, uh, oh, Salem's approaching. They're going to be, this is the problem with Salem's on land. They're pretty dog shit because um, they're just too easily killed. Now, if they have some support from land units, then they're actually quite good. But, like, artillery just comes out and minces them very quickly. They have low HP. Uh, oh, the nukes are loaded. Four nukes loaded for uh, Esperanto. Two soul rippers for Nexus. He can't use them. The mountain of subs just flying through. Look at this. this, this what is this? the fuck is that Cooper's just running into their death jeez that's a that's a massacre is he gonna launch these they're not building anymore he's just built the one t2 artillery base to defend the Salem's not necessary at all he, the t1 artillery does the job actually okay he's trying to s scout with his ASFs there flying over or two carriers as well the subs just running through look at that they actually kill Salem so fast that's so many submarines <laughs> 30 10 000 mass in tech one subs and now he just goes for the air fight oh he's not quite close enough to target the ACU directly he's just suiciding all of his air now every single bit of his air to find the ACU to make sure and now he's gonna launch right Right, Esperanto? Oh wait, actually, this is the range of the nukes, but uh, not this. Not this one. Go, 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 launch. Launch them all at the same time, not one after the other. Damn. Okay, shooting one by one is not good. Nexus. Okay, here's the SMD. One down. Oh no, he's gonna kill them all. Because they were shot one by one. <laughs> oh. The so Salem's actually getting all the way into the base now. Yeah, it's because they were shot one by one, not at the same time. That's why they didn't get through. If they were all shot at once, then... Uh, four might have been enough. Might not have been, but four may just have been enough. It would have been very close. Um, okay, and now all the ASF have been thrown away in a bid to land those nukes on Nexus Commander, and uh, that means the Soul Ripper is just going to move in, and there's nothing really can be done. 
at that point. He's gonna try and build a lot of Sams here. But um This is This looks like a goner. Looks like it's probably Dunzo. Uh the subs <laughs> subs are <laughs> incredible. Look at the massacre. Jesus. Where's the ACU? Here's here's one of them. Hiding. Uh nuke subs just got torpedoed right there. All four of them gone. Uh they weren't gonna be any use anyway. Um here's Nexus. Under shields. How does a 2200 make that mistake? I don't know, you ever see someone miss a penalty? How does that happen? Same story. Alright, so... I think we can speed this up because... I don't see any way back anymore. Okay, the Soul Ripper. He's already lost one Soul Ripper, actually. He's going to lose a second one if he's not careful. Get away. He's going to lose this, I think. Ooh. Just survives. Game would have been quicker if mid navy was passable. Yeah, this mid, these mid chokes made the game very strange. <laughs> what a game. Alright, hit like if you're enjoying, guys. Uh, I, did he actually snipe the ACU? Anyway, uh... Good stuff. Uh, Nexus with an insane comeback there, I'd say. Esperanto, yeah, made some serious errors. Um, had It was really doing extremely well. Ahead most of the game, but Nexus held on and just refused to lose. So let's go on to the next game then. So Nexus won game one. Esperanto won game two, Esperanto won game three, Nexus won game four. <clears throat> All right, Tita Passage five, so, uh, Similar to Theta, but much more. Well, it's actually it plays quite differently. A lot of mass, a lot more mass to take. A lot more mass points. Decent bit of reclaim in uh, across the map, in the middle of the map here as well. So, and four hydros to fight for. Very, very open. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So. Factory, P-Gen, two Mexes, then off to the Hydro. Nexus uh, skips the P-Gen. And so walks the ACU a bit faster. Let's engineer, grab the next Mex. So you can see like small efficiency things here, like Nexus builds the factory here and then builds the Mex over here with the ACU. So then this NG can just come out of the factory, immediately build this Mex. Rather than say, you know, building this mechs with an NG or something. 
things like that make your opening better. So, major thing is um, where do you send the ACU? Who's going to get more value from their commander? Because obviously, it's a small map, you can't really do too much about the commander uh, unless you're using your own directly against him, which may or may not happen. Does it? We'll see how it goes, but it's very good to get across the map as much as possible with the commander. Uh, to really try and control a big area of the map. Nice kill with the lab there. Pretty good micro. And yeah, just going to back away now. Keep it alive. So we see second land for Esperanto, three NGs. There is quite a bit of mass here. You gotta grab the reclaim in front of the base pretty quick and you'll need a decent few NGs in the base to spend that as well. Nexus working on his fourth factory already. <laughs> Esperanto doesn't even have three yet. So already we can see that Nexus with a very low power income is really focusing on just maximum land spam oh there's no way he gets another kill here right yeah striker is very good has a good uh, muzzle velocity against lab so it's hard to keep dodging those shots also has a good turret uh, turn rate as well compared to other tanks at the tech one stage so it's quite good against labs uh, Esperanto has a third factory and it is an air factory so should see a bomber yep just about to finish even getting getting assisted out of the factory to really maximize the damage here or maximize the speed of the damage but look at Nexus just he's everywhere the units are everywhere 13 tanks 12 tanks versus 5 and look this NG oh not targeted goes the doesn't go down this ng does however i mean this ng really would expect to die he's being very aggressive there bomber coming in one dead ng and the bomber not micro too hard oof nexus tried to dodge there at least split the ngs up get them away from the p gens but uh it does does lose another one I prefer Thaim or Striker? Uh, Striker. Striker is definitely, in my opinion, a better unit. Um, Thams are just slightly faster. That's their advantage, really. But other than that, I think, you know, a Striker is much nicer. More, it's easy, it's better to micro. It has a better fire cycle. Yeah, it's a good unit. Um, not an amazing tank, obviously, but yeah, it's better than Thames. So still on four tank, four factories is Nexus. Hasn't built another one since because, well, he didn't have any engines in the base anyway, and um, yeah, he's gonna. Yeah, he doesn't really have time to build one with the ACU either. He has to keep fighting. So yeah, he's really been damaged, and maybe, yeah, he just lacked engines in the base. There went for very. For, went for a lot of tanks and uh, lost some NGs to bombers and now he's he's behind on factories. Z4 land factories here for Esperanto and one air factory and the bombers are doing they're doing okay presenting some problems. Nexus is going to have to build anti-airs and maybe I, I don't think he'll give in and build an air factory right now. I don't think he can given his power production. So he's trying to secure the middle, wants to get this factory up, I really don't like that factory, but he's sort of forced himself into it. <laughs> Bombers could come in and do a very nice run on some pigeons that are right next to each other. Also Nexus building the pigeons so far out of his base is dodgy. I'd love to have pigeons like on this back plateau or something. Maybe not right in the corner, but like here would be 
Pretty great. There goes three pigeons. Nice bombing run. Very nice bombing run. Will he get that NG? No. Walks away from the flames. A static anti air in the base. Probably should have been built a while ago. But again, a lack of NGs. This is what it'll do to you. Okay, that bomb just went on the factory. Could have gotten two more kills there, but missed out. Ooh, Nexus actually wants to get away from that fight. I think he could have crushed that. So many bombers. But what are they really killing? <laughs> oh yeah, didn't I missed these pigeons. Nexus actually has a lot of quite a bit of power now. He's actually using all of it. Big lack of intel for him. Hard to get any radars up for any length of time when you have bombers flying all around you. And also, both players really lacking power. There's so much mass in this map that you're kind of a bit surprised by it, maybe. And, yeah, both players lacking energy to even keep radars switched on if they, if they could even build them. Or if they would even build them. Um... Why are there so many artillery for Esperanto? I feel like he has more artillery than tanks now. It's almost it's 50-50, which is not a good mix, but this attack is quite nice. I mean, the advantage is certainly you can if you do get through, you can kill mexes very quickly with a low bow, but uh they're not going to be useful against strikers really. And unlikely to be useful against Nexus ACU. He's pretty good at microing. Okay, this factory at the front is going to be reclaimed. It's, it's 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 really not good to have factories at the front on such a small map because the ACU it, it is very likely to remove them from the field. And now both ACUs fighting. The PJ next to Nexus. He's going to grab the factory mass and just about get away from the Lobo shells as well right after that which is quite nice uh, a lot of damage actually got through there two four six mexes went down for Nexus and they're still down so it has to replace those as quickly as possible you can see Esperanto has pretty much all the mechs on the right hand side that he ought to have bombers coming in getting shut down pretty quickly nice that's a very nice reclaim field if Nexus can actually take that and the Lobos are gonna try their best against the ACU it looks like he may have landed some shots but not many Nexus still on seven and a half thousand HP 2,000 less than Esperanto and Esperanto also with more kills on his commander more um, more veterancy looking like Esperanto is the one dictating what happens here. Nexus playing really defensively and uh, Esperanto oh, it's a big risk to send so many units to the left side especially a lot of Lobos um, and now Esperanto looks quite lonely where have all my friends gone but can Nexus ever catch up? No he has the same speed as ACU so unless he blocks him He's not going to get in range, and that's the main thing to be avoided. If you are going to take a risk like that, send your units away. Just just know that you really cannot allow the enemy ACU to get into range of yours. You have to stay further than arm's length away. A lot of factories for Esperanto. He's got a good income, but that's too much. <laughs> He's ahead on power, ahead on mass, and Nexus is struggling. His whole left side is going to die, although... This PD will save this position. He does have Lobos, so could even just send a Lobo here and kill stuff from, from below. That mech should go down. Bomber's still flying around, but honestly, Nex is pretty good with the anti-air. Look at this guy. 400 mass killed. We get the last, the final shot. He kills the, kills the bomber. Almost every mech on this side dies, except this one, and it may die now to these Lobos on the low ground. The attack here is thwarted. Finally, uh, but not before all the mexes here have gone down. So 
yeah, you know, there's reclaim to grab for Nexus, theoretically, but in the meantime, he has 20 mass income, and uh, he's in trouble. He is in trouble, and he did lose that mechs and PD on the left. Doing some good damage here. That mechs is going to go down, and then the strikers will go down, unless he's not target firing, which he isn't, so mechs will actually survive. As the tanks switch to fight the enemy tanks as they get into range. Nexus dropping very low. He's not dodging so many of these Lobo shells anymore. Clearly. He's down to 2200 HP. Oh he's, oh, he's taking a lot of damage here. Another shell comes in. He's not taking full damage from a lot of these. But I mean, even the glancing blows are destroying him. He needs to get another vet just to get some regen back. But like he's so far behind on HP on his commander that and that is one of the most important resources on on a small map is how healthy is your ACU like a 12k plus and one vet ahead to 2000 HP Esperanto needs to just make use of this uh, this ACU now he still has a lot more map control Nexus is still missing four five mexes here not he doesn't have engineers grabbing the reclaim to make up for it either. Does seem to have a decent army now though. I think he's gotten some good trades. Basically Esperanto traded uh, units for mass income rather than trading them versus other units. But uh, the the health on the ACU is really the biggest problem I think for Nexus. 60 tanks to 60 tanks. Yeah the army is very similar now. Almost identical except Nexus has some anti-air. Quite a few anti-air in there, actually. And here we go, gun. That's, that's, that is the move. Once this gun is done, there's not much Nexus can do. If the HP was a problem before, it doesn't even matter anymore because this is a gun comm, UE have full HP, pretty equal units, although Nexus got a really good trade here, but now Nexus, can he even escape? I mean, he can't escape if he goes here and maybe up, but like, there's, there's nothing that can stop this ACU. There really isn't. Um, I don't think he can escape. <laughs> I mean, he can, he's, he's out of range of the ACU, that's probably needs to go up more. But uh, I think if Esperanto just slowly walks towards the base, keeps his units with him, uh, there's nothing much can stop him. Might need to see, like, PDs could slow him down potentially, but, I mean, there's no hope for... There's no Tech 2 for Tech 2 PDs or anything. Both these players just spamming Tech 1. So... He stops to build a Tech 1 mechs, that's probably ill-advised. Time is of the essence, and he sent a huge number of units down to, to to this position. Way overkill on that one, which really slows down his move with the gun ACU, but still he's in a fantastic position. Nexus somehow needs to find time to make a gun of his own, and maybe Nano as well. At least gun, he needs gun. Uh, and he actually stopped moving back towards his base. Is he... Where is he going? He's moving to the right now. He needs to make up his mind. And he needs to prepare some engineers to try and upgrade as fast as possible. He hasn't moved back very far here. And he doesn't have engineers. Okay, he does have engineers on hand. Energy-wise, he doesn't. he didn't have a storage either. Which means he's going to stall extremely quickly. And he already has, as you can see, less power income. So... Without a storage, um, it's quite hard to make the gun on this map. With this, well, with this income, it's hard to make the gun without storage. Esperanto had a storage when he upgraded, which helped quite a lot. There it is. Problem also for Nexus is in terms of storages. If he does make them, it's very likely they get bombed. So that's an issue. But yeah, he's he's getting the gun up. It's it's painful though. It's hurting him. Uh, 
Miss Pronto's chilling, making nano. I assume, yeah, that's nano. More damage on the left hand side, dodging some PDs. Bomber is also helping out. Bomber coming for the PD now, that's a nice move. And, uh, yeah, gun is done. <laughs> Nano's not done. But he is about to get another veterancy. There we go, another veterancy. He's very healthy now, 14,400. Nexus shifting. Cancel on the Nano as it's almost completed. Nexus sees this as his chance. I mean, look, Nexus knows he's been behind for a very long time. He's just going for it. Going for at least a draw here. And maybe the win. Oh, they're both similar HP. Nexus lower. Oh, Nexus a lot lower. And he's dying fast. Denji's still on 5k as Nexus hits 0. Esperanto wins. On Tita. And takes the series. Uh, that, that was the best of five, three, one. Um, really good play from Esperanto. I mean, if you look back at the series, um, Badlands, sure, Nexus was very comfortable there. The ditch, you'd have to say, I mean, Esperanto just had a better approach. I mean, he was behind eco-wise and stuff, but he won navy. Ready to make drops, so very easy to make. Oh, 3-2. Sorry, yeah, 3-2. Um, but, uh, yeah, on the ditch. Nexus lost. Lost navy and really didn't have any way to defend against broadsword or the continental Percy drops but I mean he was in a good position but but not a completely winning position that's for sure so that was a very good win for Esperanto then point of reach Esperanto just got some good kills early on on transports or uh, well he did he had some great fighting for the islands and then ended with a snipe. The, the map gen game was crazy. Absolutely crazy. And Esperanto really was winning most of the time there. Managed to find a way to lose it. I feel that. And then uh, Esperanto. Just a very good win on, on Theta. I think Nexus messed up a little bit. Uh, lack of NGs in the base. Lack of... Uh, factories then after that and uh, Sparanto takes 3-2 very big upset one of the biggest upsets in in lots I mean Esperanto I have I always found that Esperanto is very good in I mean obviously he's a really good 1v1 player uh, but I think he also is better He's he's a tournament player, I think. He's you know some players are really good on ladder. Don't do much in tournaments. Esperanto, Esperanto has a good, pretty good tournament history. Um, and he really wants to win. He really wants to win. Nexus maybe has won so much that he doesn't want to win as much anymore. I think that's probably true as well. But uh still very difficult to take him down even now so very nicely done quite a nice series 3-2 interesting games especially the map gen so that is let me see yeah I'm gonna end it there we just cast that one set and I will probably cast some more games from lots Obviously, he's coming up to Christmas, so we'll see what kind of time we have to do that. But um, we'll get a bit more done. 
for posterity. When's the last final? It is done already. I will post the challenge link so you can see all the results if you would like. And uh, yeah, again, hit like on this stream, guys, if you enjoyed it. And I will see you all pretty soon. Bye, guys.